flexing and revelations and perhaps the best climax of your life in more ways than one. DC Universe's Doom Patrol, episodes 13 and 14, review, breakdown, and comic book talk. Hey y'all, it's your Twisted Girl Next Door here, and oh my gosh, I was so sick. Maybe, like, I was in the white space? But I'm back now, and I want to talk about episode 13 and 14 of DC Universe's Doom Patrol. Okay, so because I have two episodes I want to go through, um, I want to do the overall thoughts of each episode and also the major, major happenings of each episode as opposed to a total play-by-play, -play, but more so the major happenings, which is kind of similar to what I already do, but major happenings in each of those episodes. And then I want to do the overall ship talk because you know I got to talk about my ship talk, y'all. And then, of course, I want to do comic book talk because this show is based off of a awesome weird comic book series and then finally my predictions because I know you guys missed my predictions uh, or lack thereof when it comes to this show episode 13 flex patrol this for me was another episode of calm before the storm in the sense of certain things needed to be worked out before we moved on into like actually facing off with a Mr. Nobody finally, right? So um, it was a nice slow paced episode. Uh, well, after like the very beginning, because the very beginning took place like right after the last episode with you know, the whole situation with Vic and his dad. And oh my gosh, I got some stuff to say about that. But yes, so we got to know Flex, which I really appreciate it because I actually really like his character. I thought his character would be such a like kind of joke character. And in some ways it was, but it was done in such a quality way that it actually really worked. So that's like maybe, like, I think that's a mixture of kudos to the writers for this universe that they've created that even such outlandish characters don't feel like total like you know uh character or comic relief you know and so I thought that worked and then you know we got Rita's secret finally which I have some thoughts on and and overall we got the conclusion that these characters are ready to fight and we got some total meta so I enjoyed the episode for what it was it was definitely a slower paced episode and just I think an episode that kind of showed you the progress that a lot of these characters had made. Flex Mentallo and the fight to get his memories back so that they can potentially find Chief. All right so Flex ended up getting his powers back right uh, because he saw Dolly uh, and uh, that was very sad to be honest. I mean Dolly's life was pretty much taken over by these you know the Bureau of Normalcy, and so as soon as she recognized him, she faded away, which was really, really sad and very sad for Flex. But that moment when he totally becomes himself again was so epic and awesome. And that's because within this show, within the episode, they built up to that, right? You know, the whole thing of him watching his soaps, not knowing who he was, uh, seeing his body, which is an awesome body. And and I thought it really worked. I think in the midst of this, we also got uh, Jane and Cliff team up, which I'll talk a little bit more, of course, when it comes to my ship talk. But uh, I think that dynamic worked more so their dynamic with Flex. I think that worked as well, which could have been, you know, maybe it couldn't have worked, uh, you know, because you have this newish character and you're kind of throwing him in. You don't know which characters he'll play off well enough with. But I think it really worked with the two of them trying to figure things out. And in the midst of that, we got the backdrop of Larry and Sparky. That's what I'm going to start calling him now. I'm calling the negative energy Sparky from here on out because that was Flex's name and that's my name for him as well. And so... I thought that was an interesting backdrop. One, I think it reestablishes just how sinister the Bureau of Normalcy is. I mean, yes, we have Mr. Nobody who is just as sinister, but the Bureau of Normalcy is even more dangerous, right? Uh, to a certain degree because of what they do to the disruption of like people's lives who are different. And that's so insidious if you really think about it. And so we saw that. We saw a Larry that was not as strong as he is now. And 
and it was a little frustrating at first. I had to keep reminding myself, like, no, this is not the same Larry. Our Larry has gotten better. He's not a coward anymore. He's decided to take hold of his life. But so watching him in the flashbacks, when you know that he could help Flex and Sparky and himself get out, and he just basically does it because he's so demoralized, it was kind of like, ugh, because that was the that was who he was at one time so it was a little frustrating but it was it was cool to see just how deep um the insidiousness of the bureau of normality goes and so in the midst of this we also learned in the beginning of this episode that darren jones is still alive which actually works uh for me as you know in the last video i did say i hope he wasn't dead because i kind of like him as a like a minor villain that pops in and out so i was actually quite happy that he survived because i just think the actor really works and i want him to stay around so uh he is alive so that worked but yeah, it just shows you how deep it goes with the Bureau of Normalcy. Also in the midst of this, we see that Larry and Sparky are very much, it showed that they're fine with their union. You know, Larry was about to die. Sparky could have left. He chooses not to, and he stays, and it works. I think it really works for their partnership. And I think I like the fact that Flex can understand uh, negative energy, Sparky. I think it really works because finally someone can translate a little bit which i think is cool uh and it it allows it allows sparky to be a different kind of character than just like this entity that's attached to larry which i think we needed because he's done a lot negative energy has done a lot you know so why not have it so that he can communicate a little bit maybe they'll allow it so the audience can start understanding him too like a translator or something because i think that would really work as well so i was happy for that and i think we've seen some progress not just with larry but with sparky as a character as well which i wasn't expecting Vic puts Grid back. So Rita convinces Vic to put Grid back inside of him so that he can tell everyone where Beard Hunter is because they think that's the key to finding Chief. And so Vic does that. And that's awesome because, you know, I thought he'd be crying this whole next episode. But can we talk about the fact that Silas is not dead? Y'all, I was so concerned. Y'all know. You saw the video. I was like what are you doing? He can't come back from that. He already feels like he killed his mom. And so it really, I was so relieved that Silas was still alive. Cause I, I just thought the, the writers made the right decision. I think what's right or wrong in storytelling. But in this particular case, I think they made the better decision. Let's say that. And that they did not kill Silas off. Cause I don't think Vic would have been able to come back from that. So, um, I think it really worked. It gave him and Rita a chance, which I'll talk about in my ship talk, to bond a bit more. And yeah, I, wow, I'm just so glad Silas isn't dead. I, I think Vic, you know, Rita's secret. All right, we find out through Rita talking to the old man in the, uh, in the uh, hospital, who I'm pretty sure is the guy from Up, right? Am I wrong? Uh, yeah, I love that actor. So... <laughs> So who turns also out to be Mr. Nobody. But they, in talking to him, she reveals her secret, which is basically, you know, she was kind of helping this producer dude hook up with Hollywood starlets or potential Hollywood starlets. And one time it went wrong in the sense that one of the one of the girls got pregnant and the Hollywood producer wasn't trying to help her and Rita didn't help her and the girl ended up committed committing suicide. And that was had that had pretty much been on Rita's conscious for like decades because she turned a blind eye and we don't know what happened to the baby. So we hear a cry and we don't know where's this baby? Who is this baby? Um so I thought this secret was solid i i kind of figured that was the case i'm kind of glad it went that way and not something where the hollywood producer like assaulted the girl and that was on rita's contract i don't know if you can really come back from that so the idea that the girl got pregnant but the one was trying to help her with the baby it's a little bit more of a safer route to go because we already had the whole thing of assault and stuff with jane so i think it worked and i think it was a decent enough secret so that Rita could get ownership of it. Because if it was too detrimental, considering that they only revealed it like with only two episodes left of the season, it might have been a lot to take on in like 
two episodes a season with so much other stuff going on. So they needed to make it so that it was something that she could overcome or deal with quicker. And I think this was an okay route to go with that. I do wonder what happened to the baby. Yeah, uh, that's probably something for next season, but it was okay. I was satisfied for the most part. I wasn't, I'm not going to say it was anticlimactic. I'm going to say considering that they made us wait so long for it, maybe it could have been a little bit darker, but yeah, I mean, it it is what it is, and she needed to go through that, her, her moment of character growth, which we had already been seeing up to this point, even before the secret reveal, that she was changing and growing as a person, so I think this episode was just kind of the climax of that. Mr. Nobody's meta monologue. Okay, so I laughed out loud at this one so hard because <laughs> Mr. Nobody and, uh, yeah, doing his Mr. Nobody meta talk, uh, talking to the audience, breaking the fourth wall. Um, I thought it was interesting. I kind of wanted the merchandise that he had on. Can I get a Doom Patrol mug? Thank you very much. Uh, I thought it worked, you know, you know, uh, Rita's walking out. He's like, yes, my and it's like, oh my gosh, there's more. And so, and that's when that whole thing with Flex happened. But I think it really works, this idea that Mr. Nobody is kind of one step ahead. Now, I do think, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in my next, you know, segment of the next episode. It, I, I think it does put him in kind of this omnipotent position where it's like how do you deal with the character villain like this who like is kind of all knowing all seeing and can you defeat this kind of guy or and have you written yourself in a corner that you really can't and what does he really ultimately want right so I think the meta talk worked to get them to the next point but it also was kind of like all this stuff that they dealt with was kind of him just watching it so they could get to the point of this point that we're getting to now, which was fine. I thought it was funny. I think it reestablished the idea of Mr. Nobody being semi-likable again because last episode I was so mad at him. But of course he's a villain, so what are you going to do? Uh, but I think it worked and it was funny. So now this is a precursor to, yeah, the next episode. Episode 14, Penultimate patrol so overall this episode was big revelation one in particular which i actually want to talk about a little bit with my comic book talk but yeah that they went that route when it came to the chief and that was whoa um there was some very funny moments which i really want to talk about um in terms of <laughs> climactic proportions and uh yeah I thought it really worked we got to see Danny the street again which was cool um once again I think a lot of this stuff was culminating into where they had been leading up to which was fine it was it was a solid episode and there was there was a little creep factor too just when they got into the white space and the loop that happened and everything like that I enjoyed the episode and I think once again I it was a penultimate episode, but even in that regard, it was all leading to that one major moment at the end. So Vic and Silas talk, and basically we find out that some of Vic's memories are fake in the sense of he's been told a story about his mom and the burden he had on him, thinking it was him that made it so his mom died. And in reality, he sort of... It, his mom was still alive, actually. And Silas picked him to save and do the work on for becoming Cyborg. And so Silas kind of kept the lie going because Silas didn't want to be the one that was kind of blamed, I guess, for Vic's mom's death. So he kind of let Vic put that on his own shoulders to become Cyborg and become the hero that he is. So Vic was really mad at that and left. But I think that needed to happen, right? Um, it's out of the way now. If that's the big secret between the two of them, they can now move on from it in a way. I mean, not quickly, of course, but eventually, right? And so I think it needed to happen and it wasn't as insidious as we had thought in the beginning, I think, and it wasn't as insidious as Mr. Nobody trying to make it seem. But it's still, it is still, you know, a big revelation, this idea that, Silas allowed Vic to think it was him that killed his mother when in reality it was Silas that kind of had to make the choice. But in another vein though, it still is kind of Vic's fault because the accident that happened clearly 
was still Vic's fault, right? Like, Silas didn't say, well, you didn't cause the accident. See, that's what I thought he was going to say. I thought he was going to say, you didn't cause the accident. The accident was going to happen regardless. And so you both were casualties of it. But it was more so, no, you kind of still caused the accident, but your mom was still alive. I just had to make a choice. And I chose you for the for the the situation of becoming cyborg so yeah in that sense it's kind of still is Vic's fault a little bit so I don't know how mad he can stay at his dad but it was it was good that they finally moved on from this like they had that moment Vic decided I want to be around people who I've come to know as friends and I think that reestablishes his connection with Doom Patrol which is solid um I, I thought that was a good moment that needed to happen and I'm still so glad that Silas is alive. Oh my gosh. Doom Patrol goes into the white space. So Flex sends them into the white space, which was, oh my gosh, can we talk about the orgasm? Can we talk about the climax that happened? Because that was hilarious. It went on for so long and just the right amount of time though, because I, I laughed so hard I was like oh my gosh is this happening at first I thought everyone was gonna crap on themselves that's what I thought like the way like Rita's leg was shaking I'm like is she about to like is everyone getting diarrhea and so <laughs> everyone starts having O faces and I'm just like yeah this works this is totally and then Cliff poor Cliff he tries to fake it because he can't feel that oh my gosh it was it was so hilarious and then Flex like oh my gosh sorry about that <laughs> like flex's powers are actually really kind of cool and powerful so yeah he's totally not a joke character i mean that was a joke connected to his powers but it was yeah that was that would that actually really worked and we got to see danny the street again and we find out that danny knew the whole time where chief was he was just too afraid to send them there so a little messed up but i guess they had to get to that point where danny was like i'm not afraid anymore let's just you know get you guys there and also they didn't have flex anyway so it's not like danny could have sent them there anyway so i guess i guess it still needed to happen in the lot in the order that it did so they go into the white space and you know they get a hold of their lives in a way they we get the glimpses of their past and they could have made the decisions that just and the old them probably would have but because they had gone through so much and also the revelation of no our lives were crappy before these accidents happened they if anything the accidents helped them become better people which kind of ties into the revelation right of how it's going to be with the fallout of that but so that happens and then they go into the white space and you think they defeat Mr. Nobody because of his past with Millie and stuff and we're going to talk about that brotherhood uh you know reference that went down because that was very awesome especially about the gorilla but yeah you think they're defeated but you also kind of realize this is too easy right so there's a loop uh they're getting killed by Mr. Nobody's uh robot and then we find out because Vic shows up the real Vic and that throws everything off and it turns out that Mr. Nobody well he tells him I can't really be defeated he's like I can control this whole streaming service because he does a reference to DC Universe and and that that is interesting because once again it kind of puts this situation forward of can they ever defeat Mr. Nobody is he like a god in a way which is a little much right I feel like it's a little much in a universe where you have like Superman and Batman and all that and then you have this character that is all knowing and all powerful sort of so it's like can nobody defeat him or just can't Doom Patrol defeat him so I'm a little a little weird but that's not the main focus at this particular episode this particular episode is Mr. Nobody wanting Chief to admit what he admitted which was he caused all he caused all of their accidents to get their powers which wow right i mean they went this route we can talk about this a little bit with the a little bit more with comic book talk but they went this route when it came to the revelation and so what's going to happen right uh what does that mean you know rita may see that as a negative because she was a starlet but then again once again she had a really she was a really crappy person up to that point i think i think the people who could be really mad probably is going to be cliff and larry i would imagine it'd be those two because their accidents really put them on some you know monster type stuff uh 
Jay, not so much, because she already had multiple personality disorders, so it's not like he created the underground, he just gave them powers. And same thing with Rita, I mean, she's getting a hold of it, so it's not that messed up, I would say. With Vic, it's a little different, because that was, I mean, Chief was there, so he did make the decision. I mean, I guess Revelation could be maybe the idea that Chief thought that he maybe they could have saved the mother, but he decided to push for Vic. But with the rest of them, I think uh, Cliff and Larry have probably the most base to be really angry. Uh, yeah, especially because of the the robot makeup that he gave Cliff. Like, he didn't make him cyborg, he made him, like, Cliff. It's like, you do this to me, and then you give me, like, a tin can. I'm like the tin man. You don't even give me, like, a better, like, version of my body crazy so that was nuts i think it's going to be a big big fallout um do i necessarily agree that i can't i can't imagine that this was all that mr nobody wanted though he just wanted him to confess to the doom patrol like there's got to be something else going on we had a whole thing with that cave woman right there's got to be more to it and the thing about the beard hunter right Beard Hunter was just like, oh, I just decided to give up on it. That doesn't add up, right? Something happened. Something happened where he found Danny the street and he just decided, screw everything else. Something happened. So I think there's still more to the story. But right now, the situation with Chief and the rest of them, they're going to have to work through that before they get to anything else. Cliff and Jane. So they had a touching moment, literally and figuratively. Uh, I'm telling y'all, I think this is a romance ship. I know some people still don't see it somehow, uh, but everyone to each their own. Uh, but I, come on, that's, she ain't looking at him like a dad. And so they had a moment and she's being a lot more receptive to him. And so I think that touch moment was a moment and we're slowly chugging along to a romance with these two. And I'm here for it. Rita and Vic. I think I'm going to start calling them, like, Vita. All right, no, I won't do that. Um, Rita and Vic. So, <laughs> this is more so for the last episode, uh, or the previous episode. She went with him to the hospital, and she made the point to be the one to go with him to the hospital. She wanted to be there for him, and uh, it seemed like she was the only one that could get through to him, and he was very receptive to her, and I just thought man, I may actually really be getting my ship here. Um, you know, because sometimes I have crack ships where I'm just like, oh, I want that, but I'm thinking they're not going to give it to me. And I honestly got some hope that episode. I was like, wow, that this may actually be happening. I mean, it's got all of these are slow burdens because they're such dysfunctional, broken characters. But there's actually some potential for that, that she really was adamant about being there for him. So... Um, I think that's going to make a play as time goes on, hopefully, as, as they continue to be a team. So, yeah, I'm here for it because that was, that worked for me. All right, so with comic book talk, I want to talk about a few Easter eggs that we got, a few references, and more so this big revelation, which is totally in one of the plot lines of the comic book. So let's get into that. The first is the Brotherhood of Doom. Oh my gosh, the Brotherhood of Doom, which are pretty much like the like super villain arch enemies grouping of the Teen Titans and of Doom Patrol. And so, yeah, we're definitely getting them. Like, we're definitely getting them because they were referenced. We saw this in the beginning of the live action when it came to Mr. Nobody having had been a member of the Brotherhood of Doom and having gotten kicked out when he was still a human because they thought he wasn't smart enough or formidable enough to uh, be against them or be more so with them. And so the Brotherhood of Doom has a long history, of course, because they are the one of the major groupings of villains and so you have a few characters within the Brotherhood of Doom of the original roster 
like General Immortus, which I've, you know, talked about before in terms of connection to Niles' character um, and his history. Uh, you have the brain, which we have gotten references to. There's been some references to the brain, but we have not seen the emergence of the brain yet. So, uh, yeah, the brain is like the leader of the Brotherhood of Doom. And then we have the gorilla. Uh, now, in... Now, I honestly, when I saw the reference of the gorilla in the live action, I thought it was Grodd. I thought it was General Grodd, because uh, Grodd's my boy. Uh, he's a, for those who don't know, he's like a big old gorilla, and he's super smart, though, right? And I thought it was Grodd, but it might be what they, who they call Mon Monsieur M Masla Mahala, Monsieur Mahala. Correct me if in the comments if I'm uh, in the comments section if I'm saying it wrong, but that may be more so the gorilla they're referencing here because I don't think Ra was actually originally a member of the Brotherhood of Doom, although I do think they have helped him in some in, in some plot lines. So it could go either way, but I just think it's really cool. Uh, the Brotherhood of Doom are pretty big deal when it comes to you know the stuff they get into and if they allow them to kind of take hold of being part of the plot lines that could definitely uh give the direction now the question would be how does mr nobody fit into all of this with him being who he is did he ever try to go back to the brotherhood of doom uh with his new powers did he just say screw it i'm gonna be as powerful as, as you guys i'm wondering how they're gonna do it in the live action but the brotherhood of doom is very much a big deal and they actually are connected to the titans as well so we're definitely probably going to see an overlapping of some sort now you know villains in the titans world versus villains in the doom patrol world have a different kind of tone to them in a way so i'm interested to see how they would do that if they'd ever make it so they're going after the same person at the same time um but yeah they're definitely part of both worlds so this should be very interesting and it was very cool that they referenced them because they're the big bads so the fact that they're they're referencing them means they are around and we will be seeing them most likely then you have Chief's Confession. Now, when it comes to the character of the Chief, now, in the comic books, depending on which version of him you're going with, and we've talked about this before, is he can be really a sinister character, depending on who's writing for him, or he could be a character that has goals, and they can be kind of, at times, missed you know, like misled, not, you know, the, the intentions are good, but maybe the execution of it isn't as great, but he has good intentions. And then, like I said, in other instances, he could be very sinister. Like we saw in some, in some cases in the comic books, he manipulates the characters, right? Um, for his own gains. Uh, he manipulated in the comics Rita when it came to her powers and, and things like that in, in one version, right? And in, and in a version, he was the reason for the Doom Patrol's accidents that happened. And his, uh, in the comics, the, the goal of it was this idea that he believed if there was a world where everyone was uh, special. Uh, <laughs> that the world would be better. So he, this is what he did. He caused these accidents to turn people into freaks. You know, uh, kind of like without their choice, right? So... Yeah, it looks like they're going that route, but I don't think they're going it the route of being sinister. I think they're going the route of him choosing to do this with certain people and then um and 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 for what he thinks is the greater good. So it doesn't seem like he's trying to turn everyone into a freak, but more so he turned them into freaks. And so the question is, where did they go from this? But they totally went this route. I just think they tweaked it in it not being so that he was being sinister with it. Or at least I hope, because I like the chief and I think he does care for them. And I think maybe he was, you know, misguided at first, maybe with what he did to them. But I think there's room for redemption, or at least I think they're leaving room for redemption in the live action. I don't think they're going the route of him being completely like straight up cold blooded and evil. So I think that's a better route, but this is definitely a comic book plot line. So they went that route. I was a little worried they would, but I, I see with the, with the way they executed it that it can work. Because I, I don't want them, I don't want them to make Niles evil. And then a quick bonus, we saw Animal Vegetable Mineral Man again. I just love that he has his own like epic saga going on in the background of the universe and that they're keeping with this character so yeah he's still there
All right, y'all. So what did you think of episode 13 and 14 of Doom Patrol? We are heading towards the season finale, it would appear, when it comes to this show. And so much has happened character-wise, as Mr. Nobody put it. And I am enjoying the show so far, and I appreciate all of you watching and looking into my reviews and breakdowns and talking this show with me because I love talking about this show. So I want to know your thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking. Comment down below. What are your predictions? I don't even think I gave predictions because I don't have any. Uh, I know I said I would, but I got nothing because I don't know where any of this is going. So yeah, uh, <laughs> that's my prediction. I don't know. So let me know your predictions. Comment down below with your thoughts. And also, be sure to subscribe so that you are the first to know when I post my videos of all things horror, dark fantasy, and dark superhero. Thanks for watching. Let's get creepy together.